I have a few different kinds of straps. I'm going to show you the difference. And I'm going to start with what I believe you should stay you should avoid. Welcome back to the channel. Today let's dive right into how to strap down a canoe to a roof rack and I'm going to discuss a few key elements that you should consider when strapping down your canoe. Some do's and some don'ts, perhaps some things you didn't think of and I'm going to point that out. We're going to go in detail how I strap this thing down and hopefully that will help you secure a canoe properly and safely. So let's go right into this video. Okay, so let's start with uh, the materials you're going to need. First, you're going to need a canoe. <laughs> but honestly, let's look at the straps. The days of roping are really over. There's so many good products out there on the market. And you just cannot beat a good nylon strap. And this is what we're going to use here today. But I have a few different kinds of straps. I'm going to show you the difference. And I'm going to start with what I believe you should stay, you should avoid. And that's this guy right here. The old famous ratchet strap. These things are awesome. They're great. They will crank anything down tight. I have multiple ratchet straps. I've been using them for years. But I don't use them with my canoe. What I use is these types of straps right here. It's just a buckle that work in the sense that your strap is fed through and you simply pull in one direction and this, the tension the other way prevents it from coming out until you hit the release and then it does come out. These will give the user extreme strength. They're, uh, they compound the strength and when you crank these things down you can exert extreme force that you're not really realizing that you are exerting and you can damage the canoe you can crack the gel coat on the finish of these things using these things in addition when they're cinched down at high speed they have a tendency to wobble like this at very rapidly wobble like that and you don't want that up against the hull of your boat. Again, it's, it's obviously you're going to damage things. Avoid these things. In addition, here's another example. Great strap. I've, I use it all the time. I've used it multiple times, but there is a key difference. This one is rubber coated. This one is not. You may want to consider that when strapping down your canoe. Because again, this could cause damage, but I'll show you how you can avoid that using the non-coated buckle style. Ensuring that the strap is really flat on the hull, you'll notice that the buckle is not the part that I threw. I always avoid doing that. This buckle, if you throw it, can hit the, and damage your vehicle on the other side, chip your paint, maybe even damage the glass, who knows. Always throw it at the, the tail end of the strap. Now you'll notice that I did a little rubbing with the strap. I'm just ensuring that the strap is nice and flat, no twists, make it nice and neat. That way there when you cinch down, there's less binding involved and you'll get a better clamping force on your strap at the end of the day. 
So now let's wrap it around the, the crossbar. Now before I go any further, you'll notice that I am wrapping it around the crossbar and not around the lateral bar. This is where your clamping force needs to be, as close to the hull as possible. And the buckle, if you'll notice, is orientated in a way where when I cinch down tight on this strap, I'm pulling downwards versus pushing, pull, pushing up on the strap. Again, you'll have better force and better control in this orientation. A good stiff pull makes it instantly tight. Once you have it cinched down, give a canoe a little bit of a, a wiggle and you'll find that if it's not tight enough, you can just simply pull down some more. But while I'm here in this position, I'm going to show you how to release it. These buckles are designed that you simply push the button and it releases. But if it's cinched down quite tight, it can be quite difficult sometimes to push that button. And here's a way of getting around that. Wrap the strap around your hand, pull down first, then push the button and release. That simple. Now let's discuss what do you do with the leftover strap, the stuff that's hanging in behind. Well, tie it off. The strap in the wind will simply do this against the hull of your boat. And although it's not going to damage anything, it is quite an annoyance driving down the road listening to. So simply give it a couple of wraps around anything that is stable give it a couple of overhand knots around one of the runs done simple as that earlier I mentioned I would show you a simple trick on how to prevent damage to your canoe should you have a buckle that is non rubber coated simply do, do this Slip a rag behind the buckle. And then cinch it down. Once you have both your straps on and your canoe is quite secure, I'll show you an extra strap that I like to incorporate in the way I tie down my canoe. I use another strap, I go to the bow of the canoe or the front of the vehicle, I'll move the camera over there, I'll show you exactly what is going on. Now that I have the strap draped through the front grab handle of the canoe, you'll notice protruding from my hood is another strap. This is a strap that I sacrificed from a ratchet strap and I secured under the hood through some existing fasteners. Now this strap stays on here all the time. Whenever I'm not in use, I simply open the hood and flip it inside making sure the strap is short enough that it will not get caught in any of the moving parts under the engine this is always on the vehicle whenever i need it i remove it and it's important to note that the fasteners that i use to, to secure this strap is a metal fastener and not say a plastic button from some kind of splash guard or other part like that let's secure the front looping the strap through Simply 
feed it through the buckle. Now this strap I never tightened down, it's just taut. And this is simply a security for me. Should something happen to some of the other straps on the roof rack for whatever reason, this is a cheap insurance that the canoe will not be flipped over from the wind rushing from underneath it, throwing it out into traffic or something like that, causing an accident. Very cheap insurance. As for the leftover, just tie it off. Well, there you have it everybody a few tricks a few tips hopefully this will boost your confidence and how you tie down your load if you're interested on in how to build a tandem canoe rack to incorporate into your existing rack click on the end card i have a video that will show you step by step how to do that everyone if you like the video like comment subscribe i like to hear from you leave me your comments catch you on the next one